October 2025. Astronomers brace for a cosmic alignment no one predicted. The interstellar comet 3i slash Atlas and C slash 2025 R2, known as SWAN, a solar system native, are set to cross the same narrow corridor in our sky, each traveling from wildly different origins, yet converging within days of each other. Official reports dismiss this as pure chance, but the data reveals a coincidence with odds so remote, scientists are genuinely stunned. Could these giants interact, disrupt, or reveal hidden forces as they appear to cross paths before Earth's eyes? Is this just a freak alignment of two wandering bodies? or evidence of something deeper, even deliberate? The answer lies in the trails they leave, and the secrets this convergence is about to expose. C slash 2.1925 R2, better known as SWAN, first appeared in the data on September 11th, 2025. Vladimir Bazugli, monitoring the SOHO satellite SWAN instrument, caught the earliest signs, a faint streak in Virgo that brightened almost overnight. Within days, Amateur astronomers across Europe and Australia confirmed it, a comet with a tail stretching two full degrees across the sky, nearly five times the width of a full moon. That kind of reach is rarely seen outside the great comets of the last century. Swan's approach is nothing short of dramatic. By mid-September, its brightness surged from magnitude 11 to 6.2, then spiked again in a sudden outburst, briefly touching magnitude 5.9. As it races toward its closest pass, Swan's tail grows even longer, visible in binoculars to anyone patient enough to scan the evening sky. On October 20th and 21st, Swan will sweep just 0.26 astronomical units from Earth, about 39 million kilometers. That's close enough for its coma and tail to dominate the western horizon at dusk, outshining most background stars. Swan's orbit tells another story. Unlike newcomers from the deep Oort cloud, it's a long period traveler, returning every 654 years on a path that arcs far beyond Pluto before swinging back toward the sun. Its current journey brings it through serpents, brushing past the tracks of other notable comets, but none with quite the same scale or spectacle. For observers, Swan is a fortress, steady, massive, and impossible to ignore, setting the stage for a rare celestial encounter. July 1st, 2025. The Atlas Survey Telescope in Chile flagged a moving point of light, barely a whisper above the noise, on a routine scan of the southern sky. Within hours, teams traced its path backward to June 14th, piecing together a string of faint images across multiple observatories. The calculations told a story that was anything but ordinary. This object wasn't bound to the sun. Its orbit, hyperbolic and steep, marked it as a true interstellar visitor. Only two such objects had ever been confirmed before, Oumuamua in 2017 and Borisov in 2019. Now 3 i slash Atlas joined their ranks, carrying clues from another star system. Unlike Swan's looping return, Atlas cuts a one-way path through the solar system. Its closest approach to the sun, or perihelion, lands at 1.4 astronomical units, just inside Mars's orbit, on October 30th. Closest to Earth, it will still be a distant 1.8 astronomical units, but that hardly dampens the excitement. Every interstellar comet is a rare sample, a messenger from a place we'll never visit. For astronomers, the chance to study its makeup, ices, dust, the chemistry of its coma, offers a direct glimpse into the building blocks of distant worlds. Atlas's trajectory threads through the inner solar system on a course that, from Earth's vantage, brings it eerily close to Swan's own projected corridor. Their origins could not be more different, one a native, the other a wanderer from the dark between stars. Yet, by late October, both will share the same patch of sky, a crossing that defies easy explanation and sets the stage for a convergence unlike any in living memory. Atlas isn't just rare, it's restless. The first surprise came weeks before perihelion, when early spectrographs detected water vapor streaming off the nucleus at a distance where sunlight should barely warm the surface. That kind of early sublimation is almost unheard of even for Oort cloud comets. As Atlas closed in, its coma took on a distinct green glow, a sign of diatomic carbon. But the intensity and spread defied prediction. 
Amateur observers in Chile and Spain logged brightness jumps that didn't match any known outgassing model, recording magnitude swings that left professionals scrambling to explain the energy source. Then came the acceleration pulses. Teams tracking Atlas's motion noticed a subtle but persistent pattern, tiny, sharp changes in speed, spaced about two weeks apart. The numbers held up across independent observatories. Position residuals, measured in arc seconds, spiked and settled in a rhythm that didn't fit solar heating or simple outflow jets. Some speculated about rotational spin-up, others about hidden vents or even non-gravitational forces, but no consensus emerged. Photometric records from late September show Atlas's brightness curve rising ahead of schedule, then flattening unexpectedly, as if the comet's activity was being throttled up and down by an unseen hand. The tail, faint but unmistakable, stretched longer than models predicted for an object still so far from the sun. Each anomaly, on its own, might be dismissed as noise. Taken together, they demand an explanation, one that standard comet science has yet to provide. Four competing theories. Now race for the spotlight, each with its own testable prediction. The first, known as the volatile layering model, suggests that both Swan and Atlas hide pockets of exotic ices beneath their surfaces. As sunlight penetrates deeper, these buried layers could unleash sudden surges of gas, producing the kind of abrupt brightening or coma expansion that defies steady-state models. If true, observers should catch sharp jumps in brightness or the sudden appearance of rare emission lines, especially in the infrared. A second framework centers on rotational fragmentation. Here, the idea is that uneven jets of gas spin the nucleus faster with each orbit. Eventually, the comet reaches a tipping point, splintering into fragments that expose fresh, unprocessed material. This would show up as abrupt changes in the light curve, the sudden birth of secondary nuclei, or a flurry of new tails fanning out behind the original core. The third hypothesis focuses on dust grain charging and magnetic interaction. As the solar wind sweeps through the corridor shared by both comets, electrically charged dust grains could respond in unpredictable ways. The result might be sharp kinks, bends, or even complete disconnections in the comet's ion tails, synchronized to bursts of solar activity or magnetic sector crossings. Polarimetric imaging and time-lapse sequences could reveal these subtle but telling distortions. The final contender is the interstellar processing model. Atlas, as a true outsider, may carry dust and ices shaped by environments far beyond our solar system, molecular clouds, supernova remnants, or even ancient planetary systems. Observers should look for unusual spectral fingerprints, isotopic ratios, or vivid colors, like the intense green glow already stirring debate. Each theory offers a roadmap for what to watch as the convergence draws near and the data begins to flow. Official silence descended as October drew closer. Major observatories, citing scheduled maintenance and solar avoidance, blacked out their feeds just as the comets approached their crossroads. Internal memos from the Very Large Telescope and the James Webb Space Telescope surfaced, revealing overlapping downtime that left a suspicious gap in continuous coverage. NASA's public releases stalled, with statements delayed and key figures unavailable for comment. Within 48 hours, raw image files and photometric logs began leaking onto amateur forums, data that should have been embargoed. Backyard astronomers, some with nothing more than modified DSLR cameras, organized nightly sweeps, sharing every anomaly in real time. The race for unfiltered evidence turned frantic, as if the truth itself might vanish into the blackout. The institutions held their line, but the public wasn't waiting for permission. October's observation window narrows to a razor's edge. As Swan climbs higher each night, Atlas slips ever closer to the sun's glare, just days from vanishing behind the western horizon. The blackout is real. For nearly a week, major telescopes stand down, forced by safety protocols to avoid imaging so close to the solar limb. But before the curtain falls, every available instrument is pressed into service. Keck and VLT sweep the corridor for sudden brightness jumps, outbursts, tail kinks, or the birth of fragments. JWST trains its spectrometers on the fading target, 
hunting for rare volatiles or spectral lines that don't belong. Amateurs scattered across continents coordinate dusk to dawn patrols, logging every flicker and anomaly. The countdown is relentless. A handful of nights, a global surge of eyes and sensors, and the knowledge that any missed signal could rewrite the story of these cosmic wanderers. On October 21st, 2025, Comet C-2025R2, known as SWAN, will pass just 0.26 astronomical units from Earth. Meanwhile, 3MI-Atlas, only the third confirmed interstellar object, will trace a sky path that overlaps with SWANs from our perspective. These facts, confirmed by SOHO-SWAN detection logs and Minor Planet Center bulletins, set the stage for unprecedented observation. Despite extensive monitoring anomalies like SWAN's rapid tail brightening and Atlas's unusual green coma in early sublimation, remain only partially explained in published data. Official observatory schedules show periods of restricted access, and several amateur networks have reported delays in data releases. As of this closing, no institution has publicly resolved the cause of these anomalies or the significance of the optical crossing. The convergence of two rare visitors, one bound and one unbound, reminds us that much about our solar system and the broader cosmos remains uncharted. Documented events raise verifiable questions that future observations must answer.